Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining the Ceresco pool design video series. Pools are notoriously difficult to get right. Uh, lots of things uh, you need to know. You don't do a lot of them in your career, so uh, it's very easy to miss a detail. Uh, the good news is when you're doing one of these, uh, whether it be a, a residential lap pool as we see here, or a large institutional pool, the design is always the same. Uh, the series is going to take you through all of the key steps and uh, we're going to try and highlight some of the key aspects for you. We have a downloadable version of uh, this presentation that you can get if you want something printed. And it's always recommended uh, that you pull out your ASHRAE handbook, 2011 handbook, chapter 5, covers all of the pool design aspects as well. Very handy resource for you. The video segments have been broken down into four key considerations. These are uh, the key aspects when you're designing the facility that you really need to uh, address. We've broken them down into, into sort of bite-sized key design topics. Number one, of course, is going to be meeting with the owner to establish the expectations of what they're looking for. Uh, secondly is load calculation. Uh, that's actually fairly involved and since people don't do pools regularly, you're going to need some help there. Air distribution, uh, you're probably going to hear this a few times during this video series, pools are different. Uh, they're very um, detail oriented and there's some aspects on the airside design that you really need to be aware of. And then finally, um, indoor pools have a very large energy footprint and there are some things that we can do on a design standpoint to minimize that energy footprint and there are also some leads considerations there as well. The first and most important step in your pool design is going to be your meeting with the owner. You have to get on the same page. You need to talk to them and find out exactly what they're going to be doing uh, at their facility so that when you do your design, you can deliver exactly what they're expecting. One of the first things that you should talk to them about is what are they doing on the water side, believe it or not. Um, you've all been to an indoor pool where there's been some air quality problems, you've smelt the chemicals, uh, it's been an unpleasant experience. There's been a lot of terrific advances in the water side technology that will have a huge positive impact on the air quality. Two of the biggest uh, advances have been uh, UV lighting and uh, there's a source capture device from a company called Paddock and I'm going to explain both of those here in a minute but uh, the, the key aspect here is we need to understand what they're doing on the water side because ultimately uh, it's going to make uh, our life a lot harder if they're not doing anything and it'd be an opportunity now that you're aware of some of these technologies to tell the owners that they really ought to investigate some of these things because it will have a real positive impact on their air quality. So the first thing is ultraviolet. On the water side, this is on the pool water end of things, uh, there is a technology out there where they use ultraviolet uh, on the water and they actually, the advertisements in the trade magazines actually um, claim no chloramines. Chloramines are the things that you're smelling in the air and if you imagine having a technology in your pool water that guarantees no airside chloramines, that for us on the air side of things means we don't have to worry about air quality near as much as we do on a pool that doesn't have it. There's also a new technology out there from a company called Paddock called the Evacuator which is a source capture device and essentially what that does is it draws the chemicals off the pool water and exhausts them out of the facility. Both of these technologies have a fantastic impact on the air quality and again are something you really want to talk to the owner about and again if they're not considering using them they really ought to because it makes the air quality so much better in a pool. One of the things we want to talk to the owner about is what they've promised their customers, the patrons. We need to establish exactly what those folks are expecting so that we can be on the same page and deliver a system that's able to provide exactly those conditions. For example, if you're doing a community center, uh, they might have a very wide swimmer base. They might have competitive swimmers looking to do lap swimming in there. They might have aquafit in there and they might have elderly swimming. Those are all completely different environmental conditions. We need to be aware of that up front because if one day the water is supposed to be a different temperature than the next, we have to be able to model all of those so that we can accurately predict the evaporation rates and design the system to accommodate that properly. Again, uh, if you've got a commercial uh, pool where they're doing swim meets, you might also have a spectator area. We need to know what they've promised the spectators as far as comfort goes. That might require a separate 
design. Um, again, all of these things factor in just in an effort to be on the same page so that we deliver a system that gives them exactly what they're expecting. The geographic location of your facility is important to know. It impacts not only the load calculation, but also the building envelope design. The further north you are, the more critical things get. If you've got a southern application, that's a climate that's a little bit more forgiving, but up north there are some things that are absolutely critical that have to be done on the design end of things. And being aware of this up front uh, is, is good ammunition for you because there are some things you're going to have to explain to the owner that you're going to need to be doing on the air side to make sure that the windows don't sweat, things like that. And also, um, they got to make sure that their architect designs the building envelope suitable uh, for that particular climate. If you've got a very cold climate, the architect needs to make sure that there's a vapor barrier in place and they're very detail oriented to make sure uh, that you don't have any localized moisture problems or anything like that in the building envelope. Something else to discuss with the owner is the budget. This may seem obvious, but um, pools aren't cheap. There's no shortcuts that are going to work. You have to design the pools properly every time. And in order to be able to do that, there's a cost involved. So we need to establish realistic budgets with the owner so that they can actually get the pool that they're looking for. So it's a very important discussion to have with them to find out what exactly uh, they're looking for and giving them a couple of options as far as how much that's going to cost and make sure that everything fits together properly. Once we've established what the owner wants to deliver to their customers and we know what their budgets are, we can start looking at some options that are available to the owner based on the geography as well. Down south, for example, um, you're not going to be looking at 100% outside air system. That simply won't work. Uh, you've definitely got to consider using a refrigerant-based dehumidification system or maybe chilled water, something like that. Up north or at elevation, you might be able to look at some options that are not using compressor, or maybe some outside air or ventilation, things like that. So based on um, the budget and all of the information available, it's always nice to give the owner a couple of options. And again, that's always uh, dictated by where the project is, how much money they have, and frankly, what they're promising their patrons. So these are all vital pieces of information, again, so that we're all on the same page and the owner has some options to figure out what they want to do when they're going forward with their pool design. So in our meeting with the owner, we've established what they want to deliver to their customers. We've established their budget, what their expectations are from the HVAC system. One of the things, last little piece of advice for you, this is a perfect opportunity to get all of this in writing from them so you've got record of it. The last thing you want is some nebulous design criteria and then after the fact the owner come back and say, listen, that's not what I wanted. So really. Highly recommend it. Get all the design information, criteria, operating conditions in writing from the owner, again, so that everybody's on the same page and we're delivering exactly what they asked for.